This isn't child help. This is child abuse. And Christians have fought against child abuse for centuries. Well, Mickey and Minnie aren't very happy today. This is Wretched Radio. No doubt you have whiffed the wafts that are flying out of Florida as the governor attempts to protect children, vulnerable little people, from being indoctrinated starting at the tender age of five that their gender can be fluid. And if you really, really, really think, or at least kind of think, you identify as a different gender, well, we will put together a plan for you and we will help you accomplish that. Shh, but don't worry, we won't tell the parents. Oh, man, Scylla. Has the education system gone too far? Yep, despite many good Christian teachers, it is now the ideology of educators in the public sector that they should be the ones parenting your children, not you, your values, your morals, your timing, it does not count. We know better, and we are going to teach your children what we think is right, and we're going to shut you out. Ron DeSantis, the governor of Florida, said not so fast. Legislation passed overwhelmingly to protect children starting at the age of five from being indoctrinated. And who chirped up? Of course, the progressives and Mickey and Minnie, claiming this is an anti gay bill, and that is what they are trying to suggest, is the reason that it should be overturned, and educators, therefore, should have the right to assist your child to secretly go about the business of dismembering themselves, filling themselves with chemicals that alter their testosterone and estrogen, so that the child can be what he or she thinks he is. Might I suggest to you that a government, a corporation, and an education system that seeks to do that is seeking to harm children? This isn't child help. This is child abuse. And Christians have fought against child abuse for centuries. In fact, from the jump, Christians have been opposed to letting the people who are most vulnerable be hurt. It's children, it's women, it's the disabled, it's the people with mental struggles. We, we protect the elderly. The world didn't. Christianity did. And we ushered in a mindset that has endured now for centuries that we protect vulnerable people. And a five-year-old certainly qualifies as that. And anybody who is trying to help a child mutilate or deface their own body, um, they're not protecting children, they're hurting them. An article written by Mark Hemingway at WNG helps us to go back in time to the early church. What is the history of protecting children? That's what his article tackles, and I think it's good for us to remember this because it just might encourage us, hey, we should be vocal. But let's make sure we're biblical in our opposition to people who want our children to believe in gender fluidity. That's a sin. You're harming children. Jesus has a warning for you, and it has to do with millstones, your neck, and a deep body of water. Repent. Protect the children. Help educate and give skills to our children, but do not indoctrinate our children because you are harming these little ones. And God doesn't like that at all. And the Christian church has followed the words of Jesus to defend children. Let's go back in time, shall we? From Mark Hemingway, Protect the Children, the Scary Reality Involving Sexual Abuse of the Truly Vulnerable. Because this is sexual abuse. They're they're playing with children's bodies. Oof. Why do, asks Mark, why do progressive educators, Disney, and the White House all insist that five-year-olds must be able to learn about scientifically dubious beliefs such as fluid gender identities? I would actually go a step further and say, oh, it's not dubious science. It's debunked science. It's ridiculous. It's not science. There's an XXXY period. 
that's scientific. And I can't identify as an XY if I'm an XX and vice versa. And yet progressives, Disney, and the White House want to do that. It is a part of their progressive agenda. This is Romans 1, tearing down every moral value, even at the expense of harming children. So let's go back in time. The sexualization and abuse of children were commonplace in the ancient world. The rise of Christianity created moral intuitions we now take for granted. Let's not forget what's going on with our children. They're harming children. They are brutally affecting their bodies. we got to call it what it is, sin. The rise of Christianity created moral intuitions we now take for granted. Children are uniquely vulnerable, and we must physically protect them and work to preserve their innocence. Would you like to hear a rather troubling case in point? Headline, this is from the Christian poll. Hold on one second. Where are my cheaters? From newsbytesap.com. Finnish Supreme Court doesn't consider sexual abuse of a 10-year-old as rape. You heard that, right? It's because she didn't appear to fight. Therefore, the adult who was intimate with her, if we can clean up the lingo here, Nah, who raped her. The, she didn't yell. She didn't scream. So he shouldn't have done it. He gets us pretty much a slap on the wrist, but they wouldn't consider it rape. That's child abuse. We protect children because we recognize they don't have the ability to make wise decisions regarding these issues at a tender age. Let's keep going back in time. The name of a book When Children Became People, The Birth of Childhood in Early Christianity. It's Norwegian theologian, O.M. Bakke. Bakke observes that before Christ, the ancient Greeks essentially created a societal hierarchy around their notions of, this will sound familiar, logos, or reason. Here was the thinking. Free male citizens were said to possess the most capacity for reason. Women and older men had less capacity, and children possessed even less rational capacity. Therefore, they were valued even less. That is why we are not utilitarian. We do not put value on people based on their performance, their ability to reason, whatever their giftings may or may not be. No, we value them because God values them because they're image bearers. That was not the mindset of the Greek world. Along comes Christianity to deal with what was going on in culture. Unwanted children were frequently abandoned in the ancient world for trivial reasons, such as the desire to have a son instead of a daughter, or if there was some political or economic instability, jettison the kids. It was known as expositio. Infants were simply left outside to die of thirst, exposure, or animal attacks. What a world, what a world. Is there any difference between what progressives are trying to do with our children now? Yeah, well, they're, they're, they're not trying to kill them. They believe, I suppose, that they're helping the children. The reality is they're abusing children, just like Greeks did in the ancient world. Children were often rescued from expositio by unscrupulous men or sold by their parents outright to become sex slaves. In ancient Rome, child brothels were a fact of life. Wouldn't that be a fun place to live? There's the dry cleaners. There's the cell phone store. It it wasn't quite as sophisticated as ours are today. But, and then you've got the insurance company. You've got a brothel for children. (sighs) The Roman historian Suetonius records that Emperor Tiberius taught his children um, things that children shouldn't be doing to their father. And it's not at all clear whether Romans had specific moral objections to this. The theologian Bacchi further notes that the Stoic philosopher Rufus openly muses whether a son who refuses to obey his father's command to engage in sex with someone else is considered disobedient. Permissive? Yeah. Abusive, definitely. Jesus said, see that you do not despise one of these little ones. For I tell you that angels in heaven always see the face of my father, and he's warning them. 
children are valuable in the sight of God. Anyone who will not receive the kingdom of God like a little child will never enter it. And Christians responded. They built orphanages to save kids. Over time, strong Christian notions married to classical ideas about the development of reason at different ages created the concept of childhood that we now know today. But today, we have a new breed of secular elites inverting Christian norms about protecting the most vulnerable among us. This is great writing. The categories of people we understand need special protection under natural law, women, elderly people, the infirm, children, etc., are being supplanted by catering to the needs of those who take on an identity that demands concessions. How perfectly stated. So they'll use all kinds of what appear to be dazzling arguments, but the bottom line is this. What they're proposing and doing is child abuse. It's criminal activity, and even worse, it's sin. And the message from the church, as it's been for 2,000 years to a progressive world that wants to abuse children, repent. This is Wretched Radio. If you are a fan of the show, you can watch the entire daily broadcast of Wretched Radio at wretched.org. I'll be needing to see some identification, young man. Why? Because you, my friend, are a lawbreaker. No, I'm not. You are, according to this video from Ray Comfort. Production. I need the clips on time. 911, what's your emergency? We met up. Yeah, he asked me this. to become a gospel partner and he took my credit card. 